NBA and Raptors fans in particular have been treated to the offseason content they've been craving with the Rico Hines runs, but what can we really learn just from some offseason scrimmages? Well, in today's video, I'm going to tell you because we're going to go through the three biggest takeaways that we can get from these Rico Hines runs, and I'm also going to tell you what you're not noticing about how this will affect the future of the Raptors. It is a lot bigger than you think. Let's get into it. What's going on NBA Raptors fans, it's Jacob here back with Amateur Sports for another Toronto Raptors YouTube video. On this channel, I bring you the greatest coverage and analysis on the latest Toronto Raptors news. So if you like what you see from today's video, then make sure you are subscribed to the channel. You can help me on my road to 12 thousands of subscribers getting pretty close to that milestone and be sure to drop a like on the video if you find yourself enjoying it does go a long way to giving that extra bit of support to the brand and it only takes you a second to do but let's get into our content for today raptors at the rico hines runs the three biggest takeaways that we can get from these rico hines runs and the third one is going to be the big thing that you're not noticing about this team and what this means for the organization going forward make sure you stick around for that point but these rico hines runs have been great because we're in the point of the off season i know that we've kind of gone past the Rico Hines runs now, but especially, you know, over the course of the offseason after the draft and after the whole free and frenzy thing, we're not really getting that much NBA and especially that much Raptors content to discuss, that much Raptors content to react to. And for somebody like me, I mean, maybe there's not a lot to talk about in that regard. And we've done a great job over the offseason so far to get all this content out. I think we've had some great videos, but this has provided us an opportunity to see the players actually playing basketball. And this is what Raptors fans are craving because, you know, we love the in-season part because we love watching this team play basketball. So the off-season, we don't get that. This has provided us the opportunity to see these guys in action. I know it's just off-season scrimmages, but it does give us a glimpse as to what the player has been working on, how the player is looking. You can see sort of their physique, maybe what they've been working on, how their body is doing, and all these things. And sure, we take it for what it is. It's just off-season sort of practices. It's more of an informal thing. I think it's one of the more formal ways to scrimmage the way they operate the Rico Hines runs. They take it seriously. They take it as a form of development. They want guys to go there and they want guys to go there and want to get better and actually see that sort of output on court. And that's great. And you see that with all the speeches after the scrimmages, the big players maybe talking to the smaller players in terms of what they need to do to get to the next level. And there have been some big stars at these events. We've seen Trey Young here. We've seen Steph Curry here. Paul George, and a whole host of other players taking part in these events because they want to get better and they want to help other players get better. And what we've seen a lot of as well is Raptors players at this event because Rico Hines has just been added on. Well, it's been a couple of months now, but Rico Hines in this offseason was added on as a development coach for the Raptors. And that is a pretty big deal. And people who know Rico Hines reacted very positively at the time because they understood the relationships that he has and just how talented he is at his job in making players better. So it's been great to have these Rico Hines runs back from the point where, you know, we didn't have the ability to do this over the last couple of years. It's great to see the players showing out. It's great to see the players wanting to get better. But let's get into the first takeaway that we're going to get from this event here. I think the biggest thing that I've seen and one of the most important things that I've seen is that I recognize to preface everything I'm going to say, I recognize this offseason scrimmages. We need to see the actual output on court for it to be real, but this does give us a little, a little bit of a hint as to what we're going to see from these players. And the biggest thing, one of the biggest things at least, is Scotty Barnes is that guy. I mean, everything I've seen from Scotty Barnes in the offseason, whether it's at these Rico Hines runs, whether it's at a prime event, and I know that's just Scotty Barnes playing against guys who actually aren't professional basketball players a lot of the time, but Scotty Barnes has looked absolutely insane at so many of these events. It looks like he is really going to take a huge leap going into next season. Now, taking it for what it is again, we have to see that actually on the court in an NBA setting, but he has been working on his game. The fact that he was just so above expectations last season it is a great sign because he was willing to work all throughout the offseason once his college season finished to really hone his skills, get into the NBA, and really not many people would have foreseen him winning the NBA Rookie of the Year award, and he did that thing. So what I've seen from him mostly is I think like right away when you see him, the physique, he's a lot bigger, muscles, a lot more filled out, and that's just going to help him with his scoring on the interior because he was such an interior threat. But beyond that, he's also adding in other parts to his game. It looks like he has been working on his jump shot a ton. It looks like he's been working on his three-point shot a ton. And he's hitting the three ball like somewhat consistently because last season he was shooting about 30% from three. If he can get this up to 35%, 
that's just going to make every other part of his game so much easier. And the fact that he's also working on those other parts of his game, this could be a scary season for Scotty Barnes. A lot of people are kind of saying, this guy's got a chance of getting in an all-star team this year. I agree he's got a chance. I'd be really surprised if he did it, but I am definitely not going to rule it out, especially from what I've seen in the off-season tapes at the Rico Hines runs. And what's great about these Rico Hines runs, just to kind of interrupt you know, the flow of the video here, is that it's just raw footage uploaded of the event. There's no edits. There's no cuts, really. It's not like an off-season workout tape, like Ben Simmons shooting threes every off-season. I mean, not this season yet, but every off-season, we get a tape of Ben Simmons shooting threes. Like, what you can do with your workout tapes. Like, I could shoot 100 three-pointers. I could make 10 of them. I could post just the 10 makes and ignore the 90 misses. And you see, oh, this guy's been working on his three-point game. Look at him hitting all these shots. Like you can manipulate that stuff. This stuff you cannot manipulate. It's just out there for everybody to see. If you mess up, we're going to see that. If you do something well, we're going to see that as well. Now, the second biggest takeaway that I'm getting from this event is just what this is going to do to give the Raptors the edge in season because of the chemistry that it's building. The Raptors players are showing out to these events. And when they're making teams for these events, it's like Raptors team one and Raptors team two. They're getting all the Raptors players on the same team. This is very well done by Rico Hines and also Earl Watson who has been a big part of this event. And he's one of the people on the Raptors coaching staff as well. They get the Raptors players together. In particular, they also get the Raptors starters and the Raptors bench players together because they want these guys to build the on-court relationships fine-tune those relationships to make sure they're getting the best possible output on the court with one another this is just great for the Raptors to see and sure you know maybe practicing a little bit extra in the offseason isn't going to give you a big edge but in such a loaded eastern conference that we are going to have this season with like nine really good teams like there's going to be a really good team this year that doesn't make the playoffs with all of this great competitiveness within the league and you know how close it's going to be contested this sort of chemistry building could give you one, two, three more wins over the course of a regular season. And that could be the difference between like a six seed and like a third or fourth seed. Like these individual wins are going to have huge ramifications on the season and your seeding. And the fact that the Raptors are doing all these great things together and building together is a great sign for fans going into this season. We saw, you know, how from the start of the season, maybe there were questions about the fit of certain players. And so many people were just doubting the fit of Scotty Barnes and Pascal Siakam together. And I mean, they put that to bed very quickly. They play so well together. They are they are exceptional teammates, and they make each other better. But that really developed over the course of this season where they started to understand each other's game. And the fact that there are a lot of Raptors players working together right now to iron out maybe some little finicky things that aren't going well, this is going to give them a bit of a boost going into next season. And that is great so we can get into training camp and hit the ground running as the season starts because you want to get out ahead early and not be chasing the rest of the pack, especially, as I mentioned, in this loaded Eastern Conference. But the Third takeaway. Now, this might be the actual most important one here. This is maybe something that you're not noticing. And it's not about the on-court product here. It's about Rico Hines specifically. We touched on his ability to develop players. And, you know, he's spoken so highly about Siakam and his development working with him in the past. And how maybe he's had a bit of an influence on Siakam going from somebody who's just like a bench energy guy drafted 27th overall to an all-star starter, a multi-time all-NBA player. Like, this is something that we really would not have foreseen when Pascal Siakam was drafted all those years ago now. His rise to almost superstardom has been immense. Maybe there was an influence from Rico Hines in terms of the development here, but you're seeing at these Rico Hines runs, like I was talking about all these players, all these exceptional players showing out at these events and participating in these events. And maybe it is guys just looking for a good scrimmage, a good and competitive scrimmage to help keep their game sharp in the off season. But a lot of it has to be the relationships that they have with Rico himself and that is going to be huge for the Raptors you also see like I said Earl Watson in these events and the fact that he's out there networking building relationships with these players so I think most of the reason the Raptors bring on Rico Hines into their coaching organization is the development but a little bit of a side thing, maybe even a big side thing here for Rico is the relationship he has with the players. We've seen other teams in the NBA start to bring in people to their coaching staff who have relationships with the players they want to bring in, like Jalen Brunson. The New York Knicks added in somebody to the organization who had a really big relationship with Jalen Brunson. 
Does that help Jalen Brunson make his decision to go to the New York Knicks? Maybe that's not everything, but it's definitely something that aids along the process and makes Jalen Brunson's decision maybe that a little bit more easier. The New York Knicks were also adding in people in Donovan Mitchell's camp to their team. I mean, ultimately, they, that didn't work out because they, did, they just did not execute with the trade. But that is something that made Donovan Mitchell even more wanting to go to the New York Knicks. So bringing in guys like Rico Hines, who has relationships with all these players, could be that edge the Raptors need in these free agent markets because it's no secret the Raptors don't attract big free agents. That's just not a way that we can build our team. Now we can still build up a team as we proved in 2019 through the draft and through trades and just through player development to win an NBA championship. We just have other teams maybe just have a little bit of a head start because they can attract these free agents. Unfortunately, we cannot, but maybe... This could be the thing that just starts to change it a little bit for the Raptors, to have somebody in the organization that that a free agent might respect that a little bit more, somebody within our organization that the player, maybe not quite in his prime yet, would want to work with to help get his game to the next level when he gets that prime, when he gets to that next contract. This could just be something that aids the Raptors in their recruitment process, having somebody in the organization that they love and they're going to be working with closely on a day-to-day basis all throughout the season. This could be something that attracts that free agent and helps get the Raptor that maybe missing piece that we need. Because we talked about in the first takeaway how good Scotty Barnes can be for this team and how much he can develop. People are going to want to be... The Raptors are going to get to a point where hopefully Scotty Barnes is the number one guy and you want to get the right pieces around him. And the free agent market is the easiest way to add in a player without sacrificing, obviously, the assets in your team because you're not making a trade there. Rico Hines, Earl Watson as well, the relationships they are building in their networking, in you know their coaching endeavors, in their player development endeavors could give us the edge to find one of these free agents, to fine-tune this team as it hopes to get to a point where it is contending in the Eastern Conference. So there you have it. Some of you may not have noticed. I think part of the reason we hired him was that, as I mentioned, in particular, the player development and how how he can build up this team, how he can build up some specific players is going to be vital for the Raptors. And many people immersed within this kind of NBA network have recognized this as well. So that is it for me. Those are the three biggest takeaways from the Rico Hines runs. Did I miss a big one? What is your key takeaway from this event? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that is it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please, if you did enjoy, be sure to drop a like because when you drop a like, it lets YouTube know to recommend this video to more people who have similar interests to you. Only takes you a second to like the video, but it does help me out a ton. And make sure if you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe to Amateur Hour Sports. Help me on my road to 12,000 subs. And in return, I'm giving you the greatest coverage and analysis on the latest Toronto Raptors news three times a week at least. Check the Discord the link in the description and I'll see you again next time for another video.